Hello friends, welcome back. So this video is our restaurant table booking app video series part 12 and in this video I'm going to show you how did I build this complete UI and this is just a part 1 UI as I mentioned in the demos. So in this video I'm going to show you at a high level of coding of what I did and how we arrived at this kind of a website and uh, you know in later stage I'll probably uh, release a complete in detail video of how we did this and for now you can go ahead and take the coding from this github repository and you can enjoy it and come let's dive in. Come, let's take a look so this is the website that was launched and then we have these many pages and these pages are static any of the link on these pages are static except that there were a couple of pages that we built dynamically so let's leave all these static pages this is all about the routing i will talk about the routing in a moment in the coding but let's focus on what we did as a coding part right so let's click on the book a table so when you book a table Okay, we are showing up a component here. So I'm going to first demonstrate what we are doing it here. And then I'll go back and show you what is in the coding, right? So this is one component in the component. We have a text box where you type something, you type anything in this list box. We will first initially load, like we are going to call on particular API to get all the restaurants. You have seen that API that we already have it. So we, we show all the restaurants here and then you type something here based on that it gets filtered. So we have a filter mechanism also like oh, let's see what is what do we have like we have awesome restaurant so i'm going to type awesome and it's going to filter it right so once you filter it it's going to um, you know show the branches according to what you filter so for this we have seven branches all these branches are shown once you select any of these branches it's going to call another api right to get all the available uh, dining dates and we can see right now until 29 we have a availability so you can see based on the branch you can see the available dates and like based on what you date select and based on the date that you select here you know we're going to bring up like we're going to call an api to bring up all the available dining dates so you can see the dates and then the table name here um, you know you can see a uh, table name different different table names here and let's say if i click on a particular table and say book and we're going to bring up a nice gui on the model model pop-up i'm using ngx bootstrap uh, to bring up this model pop-up i'll show you shortly how we will do it and we are going to fill up all this information and then when you do a submit we're gonna save this information into the reservation table so we also have respective apis for that and just remember this form is at a lightweight form we do not have a much validation but i'm using reactive forms just to test base every single aspect of angular all right so right now you know how this is working and one more thing this is a separate component so we are going to use most of the angular uh, you know topics here so let's take a look at the coding so you know pretty much what we are doing it here let's i'm going to bring up the coding here all right so this is the project um, let me go through at a high level of this project so we're not going to go in depth for this video this is a short video just to release the code so let's let's focus on important things let's go to package okay so what are the package that i'm using here I'm using ngx toaster so that the nice uh, right side or the top uh, CSS will come with this message that something is processing, something is done, something like that, right? So for that, I'm using the ngx toaster. I'm using ngx bootstrap. So ngx bootstrap itself is a separate uh, external component or package, I would say. It has a lot of components. I'm using it um, so that, you know, we can make use of... Uh, you know inbuilt uh, packages that they have uh, like for example model and you know, so many things they have so we're going to use the model i've already shown you in the demo so now what else we have these two packages only i'm using it for now so for this you just install these two packages and then uh, let's focus on something so let's say all right so if you look at this there are many components here right so out of all these components many are statics the only two components that i'm using here is the search restaurant component and the collect user info component search restaurant component is nothing but this component the whole section of this component where you see this one this one and then this drop down this data right all these informations are coming from the same component but when you click on this a separate component is loaded on this model and that is what the user info component and that is the user info component all right so this is the one now let's focus on the search info component so if you look at the ui perspective 
it's pretty much easy so the only thing that we have is we have the default template we have the default template and then we have an input box for the searching it is been uh, having a two-way binding so ng model and an ng model change when something is changing like user types in we call a method filter restaurant method where we will start filtering the restaurants with their name okay that is what this method will do we will see shortly in the component similarly we have two select boxes one is to fill up the branches and one is to fill up the restaurants so the first one is restaurant based on the model change of this the branches will be filtered and this select will be loaded based on what you select in the restaurant side. So this very simple, you know, uh, two way binding thing. And then what else you have? So this piece of information is basically when you select a branch, we call a particular API to retrieve all the reservation dates and we get the distinct reservation dates and we start showing this. And that piece of information is this one. You see this calendar stuff coming up. That's nothing but this piece of code. Now, if you look at this piece of code, basically what we are doing is when you select a particular date. OK, so let me open up this uh, and then see what happens. You select this particular date. All right, let's take a look. So if I go here, the very first call that we make is the restaurant. So it gets all the restaurant and then it takes a particular restaurant's branch. So by default, it is taking the first one. It's loading all the branches. You can see all the branches are coming and then that branches will be loaded here. So let's say we take this and then we load all these branch. So once you load the branch, it calls another API. And then this API is basically we are sending restaurants dining for this branch. So we get the, all the dining tables for the branch that you select. This is the branch that you selected. If you change this branch, basically it will go as two because this is the branch ID is two. So all what we're doing is we are trying to retrieve all the reservation date, available reservation date, whether it's booked or not, it doesn't matter. And then with this whole data, right, what we are doing is we are trying to get the distinct date and this date has been filled here. OK, so once you select a particular distinct date out of this whole content, we will start populating this information for this given date. Whatever is available, we are populating here. OK, that population is nothing but this table. So let me close this, this one. So booking table data has all these things it's been populated like this okay now when you select on this particular uh, item like a particular thing and say book now you see this there's a book now uh, button so when you select this particular uh, date and this this button will be enabled only when it is available okay if it is not available it is disabled so when we do this particular book uh, now you know we are calling two things we're saying uh, you know we're calling two methods. One is the book table and pass the book table. One is the book table, pass the table. And then the second was the open model is a method, pass the template. All right. So now let's go back to the component. Like I explained all these informations, right? You can see we have restaurant, we have filtered restaurants. Like they start filtering. We stored that copy into this restaurant table. I mean, this variable. Similarly, branches, filtered branches, and selected branch, and then selected restaurant. All these variables holds only the information which the user is trying to manipulate. All right. And then we have other variables to have the distinct reservation date, the distinct uh, the dining tables for that. All those are here. Now, the interesting part is in the constructor, if you see, we are loading the restaurant service. And then we have some date pipes. We are going on with the model, which is from the bootstrap, uh, the NGX bootstrap, and then the reservation service to call the reservation thing. And the final one is the toasting service, right? In order to show the nice message. Now, this is pretty much simple. All these methods are just to filter and show the data that you have already seen it. Okay, the only interesting part in this one that you need to know is all about how we format the data and how we nicely show based on what data we have, right? So they're all like almost same. Okay, now if you look at this, the, the last one that I was referring to is a model, open model. So when, when they click on book table, we just store this into the selected table. Okay, that's a variable which stores the table because this is the one that we will be passing to another component. Okay, and then there is something called open model. So let's take a look at what is open model. So open model will eventually use the model service and show the, the model nicely. Okay, and then if you go to this UI, the last piece, 
okay if you've seen this so this is the template that has been recommended from the ngx bootstrap okay we are going to take that template and store it here the only thing that we will do is add our component here in the content of the model so let me go back if you click here okay the whole model has been given bump the whole model has been given from the ngx model the center of the content which is our model I mean our component which is stored here okay now this we will take a look at this component in a second but that is what it is doing and then the important thing is in order to pass the selected table we are going to you know uh, use the input and the output the input is the selected table output is coming from that table okay so just to have uh, you know most of the concepts touched the, the input and the output uh, binding so I've used this here. Now let's go back to the new component. Um, if you look, if you look at this component, it is purely a reactive form component. So we have the reactive form form group. So we have to import. If you look at this, if you look at the model in the import section, we have reactive form modules imported, and then the model form is imported. That's from the Nginx uh, Bootstrap, and then our uh, toaster module, which is for our nice UI. And then we have our HTTP interceptor also added here. All right, now let's go back to this, the one that we were referring to. Okay, this is very simple. Okay, the only thing that you need to know is this component has an input which will collect. Okay, so this component is pretty simple and important. The only thing that you need to know is it. Ha so it has something called input. Input is of type dining table. Okay, if I go to running table, basically it has branch ID, reservation table, name capacity, all these informations. Okay, and it is taking that as input. Okay, output is, it is going to emit a type of reservation table. Reservation table is a class of model, which is nothing but the end point of the reservation is expecting this model. So, we could have done this in the same component, but our idea is to learn Angular as well. So, basically, I'm trying to show you how input and output works. We pass some input here, and then we going to pass it back to the parent component from this child component, and that will be the reservation table. So, output will be like a name that will be an event emitter of a particular type. Okay, so what we are doing here, we initialize the form using the form builder. And then the form will have whatever we wanted to send it to the reservation uh, endpoint. First name, last name, email ID, phone number, the time slot that they are trying to do it, reservation date, and what is the reservation status. By default, initially when you try to book, it is going to be booked. So I'm sending as booked as the reservation status. Now on submit, what it is going to do is it is just going to check the form is valid. And the form is valid. Take read the form value, and then it going to emit this information. This is the final information we want. Okay, I'm, I'm not doing any error handling for now. It's keeping it simple. As and when we deliver more stuff on this project, we will beautify this more. So now we know once this is emitted, we come right away to this component. You see this, once this is emitted, it's going to call this method. So let's see what this method is doing. This method, it takes, uh, it's going to hide that information. And from here, based on the data that comes from the child component, it is going to directly send this data to the create reservation endpoint and it's going to subscribe for it, reset the form. That's it. All right, so let's, uh, all right, so let's take a look. Let's quickly have a demo. I'm going to click, I'm going to click on particular things so we know what we did, 25th, let's say 26th, okay, the second one. So once I fill all this information correctly, it's going to be enabled. Even if I do something wrong, it's going to be disabled. Now click on submit. See, this is the toaster message. We initiated the request. The reservation was successful. Now let's take a look at what we did. So it was branch A. Let's take at this. Let's see what did we do. Did we book on the second one? Maybe the first one. Whatever we booked, it should have been booked here. Okay, let's do it for the branch B. I select the first one just so that I know what I'm doing. Okay, the submission has been confirmed. So we know what we did. Branch B on first date C. Now it's showing as booked. So whatever we did was booked. We can beautify this website a little bit more. But for now, all what you have to do is come to this routing model, define a route. 
and inform the path and the component so we have simple things so we have these path and components uh, done and we have hooked up into this uh, routing module and that will take care of this routing and in order to click and go to that particular thing let's go to this header go to this html and here i just need to provide the router link of where it is going and just this one and you know that is pretty much easy and you can use and use um, you know angular snippet like a dash um, router link and everything will come you just say home we are done okay it's pretty much it i hope you at least uh, know at a high level of how this is done part one i will definitely release a detailed video of this complete uh, uh, you know thing that we have developed but um, this coding is ready you can go ahead and take from the github repository we will proceed with the other functionality that i mentioned in the architecture and i hope you enjoyed this video and you like this don't forget to subscribe and hit that subscribe button and uh, if you have any questions provide it in the comment section and i'll be happy to assist you thank you and i will see you in the next video thanks for watching if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tech tutorials and don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos if you have any questions or suggestions leave them in the comments below happy coding